Um, so yeah, we've lost uh, Raimo, so um, we carry on ourselves. Um, yeah, my name is Andrea Larin. I am um, uh, representing here the prior launch, um, and we are, um, in principle, uh, it is the uh, virtual landing pad for the foreign companies in, in Germany. And um, we are also closely working with the e-residency team and um, specifically with the tax part. So um, our topic today is um, why is Estonia uh, attractive also tax-wise and what sets it apart? Um, well, from the beginning, uh, Estonia was seeking um, to attract foreign capital and um, individuals um, looking to invest. And what it came up with was a business environment which is uh, open, friendly and super easy to navigate. And um, well, the system stands in um, two strong pillars. And the first pillar is a digitalization. So an e-resident is able to run um, his or her business from anywhere in the world due to the fact that there are fabulous e-government online services available where you can access anything you need to run your business. And the second pillar is a uh, smart taxation system. Um, so Estonia has a very easy to understand um, uh, tax system, um, reasonable and well-written um, uh, tax laws, and um, also reasonable uh, tax rates. Um, and indeed, Estonian tax code is considered one of the uh, most competitive in the uh, developed world. And I would say that Estonians are also happy to pay taxes, as uh, Mike was uh, saying in his um, opening round. Um, in fact, there was a survey and Estonians were one of the two countries, um, uh, nations in Europe, who were happy to pay taxes. Um, so, um, what I will share my uh, screen. Raimo is back. Do you want to uh, say um, say a word uh, until I share my uh, screen? Yes. Hello, I'm Raimo. I'm head of partnerships at the residency, and sorry for the technical uh, problems. Uh, I have uh, two small um, technical comments. If you would like to ask anything, please do add your question to the session chat. And another thing is that uh, there is also a polls section. Uh, you can uh, open that as well and answer some questions there so that maybe um, we can uh, be based on the results and give, uh, give even uh, better answers in the later stage when you have an opportunity to ask your questions. Um, so yeah, hello to all. Sorry for interrupting, Andra. Uh, no but I think, I, uh, we are good to go on. Um, then I would um, yeah, share my screen and uh, talk a little bit what, um, why this taxation system in Estonia is then um, so um, interesting. Um, no. Um, the uh, system of um, corporate, or what makes the Estonian taxation system attractive is our system of um, corporate earnings taxation. And it is indeed um, quite unique, while um, it is a one-layered system um, where the taxation of um, profits is shifted from when the profits are earned to when it is paid out. So when a company is reinvesting and keeping the uh, profit and the money in the company, it won't be taxed only when the um, dividends, for example, are paid out, will the income tax 20% be applied. Another good thing is, or actually another hard thing for the other countries is that there are always super difficult to understand what business expenses would be possible to be deducted. And in Estonia, that is very clear. You can expense, expense everything, with one exception. Um, those expenses that are not related to your business will be taxed as salaries. Um, and with that, um, Estonian 
is really with the system Estonia is really supporting the entrepreneur and one uh, does not lose time from um, um, uh, with the private bureaucracy with the taxes in fact a um, entrepreneur can even decide to manage uh, their uh, accounting and the tax reporting itself and what makes that uh, possible is that um, their tax and annual reporting is possible to submit it uh, to be submitted online um, the tax forms are relatively easy and there are super good and explanatory uh, filing instructions um, online and the um, company's registration portal or our e-business environment is even offering a um, online accounting software which is um, um, able to automatically generate um, a large part of the annual accounts um, um, and uh, it is also connected to the uh, tax reporting system so um, the submission of tax returns is taking per month, uh, let's say, not more than 10 minutes, depends on the uh, difficulty and, and the um, uh, level. But uh, is Estonia a tax heaven? Um, then the answer to that is, is uh, no. Um, the system is fully transparent. Um, that is um, one reason I would say um, why it cannot be considered a tax seven. So basically everything is visible to public as well. Your annual accounts, how much you've earned um, and even um, whether you have tax debt. And it's also good, of course, for you to check the background of the other entrepreneurs. And the other thing is that the fact that the um, retained earnings are not taxed doesn't mean that you don't pay tax. It is simply withheld and the system is made easy. There is only one layer of corporate taxation. Um, I would like to go a little bit uh, more detail to our corporate um, unique corporate uh, taxation system so there are two ways of um, applying the corporate income tax and the implicit way to do that is tax the dividends and other profit distributions so that is then any money which is taken out to the um, or distributed to the owners of the company um, be it the natural persons or uh, another legal entities or even the abroad uh, based uh, head offices of the Estonian uh, permanent establishments and how it is taxed. So the tax uh, which is applied is income tax and um, we have two um, uh, tax um, rates, the reduced tax rate 1468 uh, which is applied when the dividends are paid regularly and otherwise it is 20th, 28th years plus 7% is also withheld from the dividend payments made to the natural persons, both residents and non-residents. Why we uh, use the uh, fractions here is that um, the uh, in a dividend taxation, these tax rates are applied to the net payments, not the gross payments as it is um, generally done. And another important, uh, interesting thing to um, to mention for the non-resident natural persons, as most of the, our uh, listeners are, is that um, you need to um, pay attention that whether you would need to declare the receipt dividends also in your own country. And um, uh, another point to uh, note is that you may deduct only this 7% uh, of withheld dividend payment income tax and not the general corporate tax, as that is the company's expense. Um, there is a second way of uh, applying the corporate income tax, and that is to the fringe benefits. Um, fringe benefits are in nature the employee's income or, or benefit, and therefore in Estonia they are taxed as salaries. Examples of fringe benefits are gifts um, to the employees, the catering, for example, um, to employees at potential at preferential price, the loans given with the lower interest rates, um, giving the company car for a use uh, uh, to an employee for non-business purposes, and and so on. So the list is quite uh, well determined, um, and how it is taxed is yes, as I said, as a, a salary first with the income tax of 20%, 
and um, thereafter also with a social contribution of 33%, um, which is calculated from uh, the amount of um, fringe benefit itself, as well as the paid income tax. Um, what makes it, uh, the system also easy is that the um, income tax declarations don't need to be uh, submitted annually, only monthly. Every month for the last month, and in this uh, so-called DSD a declaration, um, the entrepreneur is then um, declaring the dividends paid last month as well as the fringe benefits paid. Um, do you need to worry only about the corporate income tax in Estonia when you yourself are a uh, foreigner? Um, in most of the cases, the company is taxed uh, where it has the permanent establishment, which is where it does the when it when it runs the business um, uh, and uh, where its employees are, place of management is, where its factories are. There are many things to consider, and um, the profits attributable uh, to this permanent establishment um, shall be then subject to corporate taxation in that other country. Um, based on the laws of that country, as well as the double taxation agreement between Estonia and that country. Um, um, so with that, I would give back to Raimo. Yes, thanks. Christoph, uh, we have had quite many long discussions about being an e-resident and all the benefits uh, that you will get and uh, you have always uh, emphasized your long-term plan uh, and the fact that uh, in your opinion estonian tax system is actually very um, uh, good for for having a long-term plan so could you please explain your practical view how does this work or what uh, have you found out so far like well, how does this work for you as an in-resident To mute it, yeah. Um, um, yes, I'm uh, actually not a tax advisor here in this round, but a uh, taxpayer. Uh, so that means uh, I've been self-employed all my life. My name is Christoph Hübner. I'm uh, German, but uh, not living in Germany anymore. I'm running my company through Estonia for uh, almost four years now. And um, what got me interested in Estonia is, of course, in the first place, all that uh, digital magic coming from this card, um, where you can run your company remotely by design. So while in many other interesting jurisdictions, you still always have to have someone on the ground, have to hire a local uh, service provider or secretary or lawyer or anyone um, doing all the paper-based paperwork for you. In Estonia, it comes by design that you can run your company from anywhere in the world. And while having had a company uh, or several kind of uh, companies in Germany for the 20, 25 years before that, and where you always had to worry about getting a letter from any authorities for short notice um, for deadlines, I haven't received a single letter on paper uh, to my Estonian company address since I have it. But what really attracted me is the unique system of deferred profit taxation. Andra touched on that, but um, to, to really understand what that means, I set up a, a spreadsheet that I'm also happy uh, to share with you guys. It's uh, public here. I've uh, published the link in the chat, but I'll screen quickly with you and, and run over that. So, um, do you see my spreadsheet, guys? Is it here? Yeah, here it is. Right here. Uh, so, what what I did, and oh, and uh, others are clicking in here already as well. Great. So, what I did here is uh, I started with the assumption of having an entrepreneur in their late twenties, early thirties, starting a business um, with even uh, uh, three assumptions. One is. Uh, after paying yourself uh, a salary, get all your expenses uh, covered, you have left uh, 10,000 euros of profit in the first year um, to build up your, your wealth uh, during uh, your time of work until retirement. Second um, assumption is you're doing better by 10% every year um, by 
improving your product by uh, having more business partners uh, by growing your company and the third assumption is that you uh, can invest with an average annual interest rate of 5%, which with a long-term perspective of 30 years, what I'm looking here into is quite realistic. So what does that look like in Germany when I start a GmbH? Um, of course, you will see a complicated table here. Because you first have your 10,000 euros of profit in the company, um, on which you pay uh, federal uh, corporate income tax in Germany called Körperschaftsteuer. Um, then you pay the municipalities uh, corporate income tax called Gewerbesteuer here in this case with uh, quite a low rate. Um, means you can pay out yourself in the first year uh, um, close to seven and a half thousand euros on which you pay personal tax depending on your personal tax rate, whether uh, depending if it's low the um, Abgeltungssteuer or personal tax rate. So what you have left uh, out of these 10,000 euros in your personal account is a bit more than 5,000 euros. And then we run the numbers uh, for 30 years. You, you see what's happening here, um, here every year. In the last column, you get uh, the, the interest um, gained on, on what you had before. Of course, you pay tax um, on that as well. And in the last column, you see what you end up with uh, in the in the given year or uh, um, here for this comparison after the end of years. That means first column, your, your um, profit has grown to almost 160,000 euros uh, a year after 30 years. But what you end up with in your personal bank account in the end is uh, 1.2 million euros for your personal retirement. And how does that look if you do not cut out any taxes uh, during this period of 30 years, but you leave that inside your company, you use this legal entity as a vehicle to grow that wealth and only pay these 20% at the very end when you pay out the money, which is also another very realistic scenario because then you retire and you pay it out in, in tranches just as you need it and not all at once, but to simplify things here, um, we run profit to the same 160,000 euros a year, but you already made almost the same amount in uh, interest every year, which has summed up over the 30 years to 2.6 million euros. You only pay 20% in taxes once, and you end up with 2.1 million, uh, million euros um, at the end of 30 years. And in a graph, it looks like this. In a graph, it looks like this. Yeah, the red line is the one uh, what happens to your stuff in Germany. The blue one is uh, the corporate taxation in Estonia. A bit simplified, I um, I agree, because it uh, is not considering how you personally tax um, that cash flow on the personal level, but you might be um, a resident of a country um, that uh, does not tax foreign um, dividend payments anymore in addition or you might even be a perpetual traveler a digital nomad who is not tax resident anywhere by that point but this is just to to um, make you understand what the long-term effects of of um, interest on interest of compound interest or as we say in german since since is after 30 years if you don't take out taxes every year and can use that com uh, that money inside your company to reinvest, to grow, um, and grow your wealth for your own retirement. That's my point. Um, I've shared the link to the spreadsheet. Inside that spreadsheet, you also find a link to my Twitter profile through you, which you can comment. Thanks, Christoph. Uh, we'll take some questions. We have a trending question here, uh, emphasized by many um, participants. So. Um, in general, uh, people want to understand, uh, will it be more work having an Estonian company when based in jo Germany or less work? Especially when we need to consider the fact that uh, maybe some part of the taxation or some part of the taxes mm, uh, need to be probably paid in Germany, some in Estonia. So maybe first of all, Andra, you will give the tax experts view and then Christoph, uh, gives his own experience. Yes, thank you, happy to. Um, so 
that's what Ulf is uh, referring to here, that they are tax residents. And um, uh, his understanding is that the company will be treated as a German company. Um, well, the company which is in Estonia is still Estonian company. So the company that is um, established in Estonia under Estonian law is a resident in Estonia. Now the question is whether um, this Estonian company has a permanent establishment in Germany. And there we would need to look into the double taxation agreement between Estonia and Germany, where it says that when, for example, the management of the company, so the members of the board, um, are in Germany, then um, yes, the permanent establishment won't be, would be considered in Germany and the profits distributable to that permanent establishment would be taxed in uh, in Germany with the uh, Körperschaftsteuer and the Gewerbesteuer and other applicable um, uh, taxes. So um, the fact that the company is still a legal entity in Estonia, yes, you would need to uh, submit uh, and prepare your annual accounts in Estonia. Either choose you can choose uh, the Estonian um, general accounting principles or the IFRS, and at the same time, for this permanent establishment, you would need to keep the accounts also um, under the German uh, rules and regulations. And in the end of the day, um, yes, submit uh, um, the reports in both Estonia as well as in Germany. Uh, uh, did I answer now everything? Do I tell the German tax office that I pay the taxes there? Um, there are some taxes which you can um, take into consideration that, for example, in Estonia, some taxes are already paid, but that doesn't apply to, for a company. It more applies to the personal taxation. Um, so in, in Germany, you pay the taxes which are for the income, which is attributable to the permanent establishment. And in Estonia, those ones which are uh, uh, distributable to the Estonian company. So these are two separate things and you are showing them both in your annual accounts and therefore there is no double taxation uh, with this regard but yes you would need to um, uh, declare the taxes which you pay in Estonia in, um, um, in uh, Germany. I believe I answered all what was said uh, there. Um, but Christoph, you could uh, maybe give the view of how you've handled um, this situation. You are a digital nomad yourself, so your situation is a little bit different, but perhaps this transfer period um, is also interesting. Yeah, my, my case is actually uh, kind of different as I have uh, officially signed off from Germany. I'm not a tax resident in Germany anymore. Um, and I have transferred the shares in my German legal entity into the Estonian uh, company as a holding structure. Um, but what I definitely need to add to what Andra just said, which is all correct, um, is that having, if you compare, if you run a German UG or GmbH versus an Estonian OU, you definitely have a lot of benefits when it comes to running the company. So. As you're a German tax resident, you will probably not save on taxes, but you will definitely um, save a lot of time and hassle with a lot of unnecessary bureaucracy, like the mandatory uh, membership in the Chamber of Commerce, IHK, just um, mandatory stuff like um, like Rundfunkgebühren uh, um, and and all this kind of everyday bullshit that just does not happen in Estonia. So nice. <laughs> um, a question from Mark. Do you do you see that? <laughs> from Marcus. What does Estonia do with all the tax money that gets additionally uh, that yes. it gets additionally by e-residents? Raimo, I think you need to answer that. I saw that question. Well, part of it go we will invest back to the program to make it better. And uh, the other part uh, will go uh, to Estonian state budget to improve the life in Estonia, as we still have some catch up to do compared to Germany, for example. But uh, improve the digital services. Exactly, to make them even better so that uh, there will be absolutely no need to do something on paper. Uh, there are, uh, Yudis has also asked some questions regarding whether it's possible to open a bank, bank account. Uh, yes, we do have uh, business banking partners. 
there is one uh, Estonian bank called LHV, uh, which is uh, working uh, more with e-residents. Uh, it's worth to to contact them and uh, apply uh, for a bank account there. Um, yes, uh, every company has to have a, a legal address in Estonia. If uh, you, you ask that, can it be a residential address uh, when your wife is from Estonia? Actually, um, it can be. It can it can be. be yes, because my company is also registered to my apartment. Absolutely. Uh, minimal requirements. What are the minimal requirements on the number of employees? None of there is none. none. Just the member of the board needs to be there, and in order to um, to have a substance in Estonia, of course, um, it would be necessary that um, some of the members of the boards are Estonians. Um, if you are a tax resident somewhere else uh, where you don't want to so much pay the taxes, for example. Um, as well as uh, the substance, the substance is considered when you have employees, but it is not important the number of employees, but rather what are they doing? Are they uh, are they doing the actual work which is generating the business for um, for a company? Uh, when we were already talking about uh, employees and em employment taxation, maybe you can give a short overview. How does this work in Estonia? Just in case someone is interested in that. It was not to me or yes for you can you report the, the question i was i was yes. busy reading the, the page um, of uh, employment employee taxation employment taxation. yeah um shall i scare, share my screen as i have one a slide prepared for that hmm. Now, um, so in Estonia, we have a flat income tax rate of 20%. And that is applied to any salary that goes uh, annually above 6,000 euros. And on top of that, there is quite high social tax, which is applied on a cross payment, on a gross payment. Um, plus a small uh, unemployment insurance uh, premium, as well as the funded pension uh, payment of 2%. Um, so these are the basics and there are no tricks, uh, for example, if you are comparing the salary taxation in, in Germany, there are a lot of nuances what needs to be taken into account, which uh, starting from which uh, um, tax class you are ending with, uh, with various uh, status of your family and so on in Estonia, that is it. There is nothing more. Um, but to Estonian residents um, and might also be quite interesting to share here because Estonia is quite cool when it comes to uh, paying salary to non-residents which are basically um, in, in the case the person is neither performing the services inside the territory of Estonia nor Estonian tax resident not taxable in Estonia uh, but the person themselves is then um, liable for their uh, tax duties which makes it quite attractive for people who are as digital nomads, um, not a tax resident at um, And we have also one question from Icarus. I see that Christoph promised uh, to answer uh, privately as well, but maybe uh, it's worth to ask here as well. Uh, does it make sense to start a company to use uh, this Estonian company as an investment vehicle to do business angel investments? What do you think, Andra? Uh, as I understand, Christoph says that it's possible and it's a good idea. What do you think, Andra? Um, so um, overall, that you know, what kind of businesses are, um, or when it is. Um, beneficial or for whom it is beneficial, for which type of business it is beneficial to run a business is, um, I would I would say that for any business where there is actual uh, business activity also in Estonia, this is, this is number one, yeah? be it then a holding company, an investment company, um, um, the administration and uh, the taxation system is very easy, so you will benefit from that, as Christoph also said, you will benefit from that anyway. And um, you know, also the uh, wealth in Estonia are not is not taxed. Also, the corporate capital gains are not taxed in Estonia. So, 
that is also something to consider when we are talking about the investment company. Yeah? Um, and furthermore, when we need to also consider, you know, who are the owners, uh, but that is a different topic. But um, I would say definitely an investment um, uh, business as well um, makes sense to have uh, an established in Estonia. Yeah, um, I, I didn't mean to share my experience in private, uh, but just um, announced that I would uh, be happy to share them here. Um, yeah, you first need to make sure where your company is taxed, uh, but actually if it's just like a passive investment company, it's much easier to organize um, the assumption of uh, permanent establishment in the place of registration. So for example, in a, in a holding investment company uh, where you only make like two or three, four major strategic investment decisions a year, um, I highly recommend you to come over to Latitude 59 conference in May um, anyway for a lot of reasons and then uh, have your board meeting um, just right there in Tallinn. Um, document your travel, uh, document that you made the decisions there and that you don't have any other day-to-day -day decisions to make in this company. Um, and then you have high chances of being recognized with your company as an Estonian tax um, But also you asked another question regarding seeing the German notary. Um, not if you only invest in Estonian entities. So the Estonian uh, company register, handles register is fully digital and you can all sign um, with, your, with your ID card. But if you invest in, in foreign entities uh, from Estonian perspectives, like a German entity, um, and you become shareholder of a German GmbH, you still need to show up with all the other shareholders at the German notary um, and represent your, uh, then from the German perspective, foreign entity, your OU, um, and uh, buy the shares in on behalf of the foreign entity. Regarding notaries, it's also maybe worth to mention that Estonia has now created the e-notary system, which means that if you uh, are already e-resident, then uh, it is possible to use notary service by using uh, digital channels only. So you don't need to fly to Tallinn, which is like very, very difficult currently. Uh, maybe one last question uh, about employees. Yuris wants to know that um, uh, whether he is required to, to uh, yes, yes, exactly. pay himself a salary. Mm -hmm. um, in, in, print, in fact, not. And uh, when you are the only employee, or actually rather you are then the board member, it's not considered to be a salary, but, um, um, but the remuneration uh, of the member of the board, which is a little bit different from the salary taxation, not too much. Um, um, on top of that, I will be likely to be a tax resident of Germany. Then you would need to simply declare. So um, basically, if you are paying the salary for yourself, then uh, in Estonia, you are not going through the tax declarations at all. You just need to um, uh, show your um, income received from abroad in, in Germany, um, as well as pay the um, um, pay yourself the um, health insurance as well as uh, the mandatory social security contributions um, I don't know if I answered I do believe I, I answered now that part of, of the employee so you don't need to pay you can only also pay the dividends for yourself which is very common practice actually in Estonia for many board members who are just or shareholders who are just paying the dividends themselves um, in the end of the year. Okay, I think we have covered quite many questions now. So it's time to wrap it up. I understand that Antra and Christoph, you already uh, gave us uh, a short overview of uh, who could be, who would benefit the most uh, from being e-residents and and uh, having an Estonian company? But maybe to to close this um, discussion, I have one last question. If there is a person in this um, in this event who wants to read more or wants to know more, what do you su suggest? What he or she should do next? Where to search for additional information and? Uh, at which moment 
he or she needs to contact your tax advisor. Christoph, maybe you start from your experience. Yeah, I'm, as I said, I'm not a tax advisor, but I'm uh, someone who went through all this uh, for the personal use case. I have, in the meantime, I'm, I'm so uh, happy finding founding companies in Estonia that I've done that with uh, four now um, and, and keep going. It's uh, just so much fun. Um, and I'm here, especially in my role as one of the founders of the Estonian e-residence International Chamber Association. So basically an organization that unites e-residents uh, as a platform for networks, for sharing experience, and also to speak with one voice, kind of like a, a lobby towards Estonian authorities, lawmakers, the e-residents office. So this is a really good place to go deeper in questions and sharing experiences with other e-residents who have gone through the same thing once you are there, once you already have your um, company. Before that, you should consult um, a local tax advisor, just like Andra, who is shown to me on this side of the screen, maybe different for you. Yeah, uh, me as well. I would suggest that um, uh, think through who are your clients, where will be your company, uh, who are your board members, um, where will be the permanent establishment. Think these things through and, um, and there might be ways uh, to avoid um, uh, being a tax resident, um, like the corporate tax resident in many countries, uh, there is a separate, separate thing um, for you as a, as a private person. But I would suggest you to think it through quite in the beginning with the help of tax consultant or like Estonian system is also like very transparent. So there is a lot of information at the um, um, EMTA site, emta.ee, which is the Estonian Tax Authority website, if it concerns the taxes. The e-residency own site, uh, Raimo can talk about that, is, is very informative. Also in West Estonia is very informative. And um, so in Estonia, everything is transparent, is online. So about that, you can find everything um, um, uh, also online, but yes, the question will arise that what you will do with a cross-border taxation and there it would be yes necessary uh, perhaps to um, have a short discussion um, with the tax consultant as well. Thanks. Yeah, I just uh, want to add that um, I share the link of our website here. Uh, if you want to know more about tax basics or how to incorporate the company in Estonia and all the the basic most important information then uh, then we have a quite uh, thorough learn or, or knowledge base uh, section where you can you can get um, uh, more detailed information in rather simple language not uh, not going into very uh, difficult details I thank you thank you so much for uh, for joining and I hope that uh, those who are interested uh, potentially becoming an e-resident or uh, and uh, having an Estonian company then uh, you got at least some uh, overview how does the taxation aspects work for Estonia what you consider and you have now some first initial ideas uh, what you think of and what you uh, search for uh, in the future so thank you, Andra, Christoph, and uh, all the people participated in the in the webinar. It was great to be here. Thanks, Christoph. Thanks, Raymond. Thanks everybody for listening.